Well, good morning, Crossing. We want to welcome you to celebrate Valentine's Day while you're warm and in your homes. We're going to have some fun. Hey! Uh, hey! Uh, what I like about you, you hold me tight. You tell me I'm the only one want to come over tonight. Yeah, you keep on whispering in my ear. Tell me all the things that I want to hear, because it's true. That's what I like about you. Oh, what I like about you. You really know how to dance. When you go up, down, jump around, think about true romance. Yeah, I keep on whispering in my ear. Tell me all the things that I want to hear, because it's true. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat for you this morning. We got Eric Most on lead harmonica. So now, we need you that are sitting at home right now watching in your living room, on your phone, wherever you are, we want you to participate here with us. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna point to the camera and when I do, I need you to let out one loud, hey! So that way you can participate in with us. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Hey, we're gonna do this right here. Hey! Oh, I almost heard you that time. Come on. Hey! Oh, what I like about you, you keep me warm at night. Oh, I never want to let you go. No, you make me feel all right. Yeah, I keep on whispering in my ear. Tell me all the things that I want to hear, because it's true. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you, you. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you. Yeah. Hey. Oh, hey. 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 Oh, hey! Uh, hey! 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 Yeah! Hey, girl. I hope you know CPR. Because you're taking my breath away. Oh. Tell me when you're ready. Hey, baby. Do you believe in love at first sight? Or should I walk past you again? Man, if I had... If I had a quarter to give to the floor, <laughs> if I had a quarter for the four prettiest women in the world, you would get a dollar. I'm learning about important dates in history. You want to be one of them? I'll bet your middle name is Gillette, because you're the best a man can get. I seem to have lost my phone number. Can I have yours? Your eyes are bluer than the Atlantic Ocean, and I love being lost at sea. Are you a parking ticket? Because you got fine written all over you. If you were a burger at McDonald's, we'd name you McGorgeous. <laughs> I'd like to know, did, did you invent the airplane? Because you're right for me. Are you a camera? Because every time I look at you, I smile. Hey girl, I was wondering if you have an extra heart. 
because you just stole mine. Was there an airport nearby? Or is that just my heart taking off? Do you mind if I follow you right now? My parents always told me to follow my dreams. <laughs> How are we gonna not laugh when you do gorgeous? That's your <laughs> You know, you almost have to let him laugh on that one. That'd be funnier. Oh, is there an airport nearby? Because every time you take off, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Was there an airport nearby? Or is that just my heart taking off? <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, Crossing, and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for tuning in on this beautiful Alaskan weather day. I don't know about you, but I think we're living in the wrong state because, burr, it is cold. We are hope that you are nice and warm, or at least in a coat like me. Thanks again for tuning in, and we will be live for about an hour invite you to uh, come along and sing with us as we worship and praise our God this morning. We'll sing, come all you weary, come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry drink of the water come and thirst no more come all you sinners come find his mercy come to the table he will satisfy taste of his goodness find what you're looking for so love the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever failures bring your addictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting there with open arms yeah for god so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him We'll live forever. Oh, the power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the
the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Yeah, what a joy it is for us, man, to have a God that loves us, who offered up his son just to give us freedom, to give us a way that we could be made right with God. We'll sing of his love. I am weary from the waves crashing over every day. God of mercy, please come rescue me. I am longing for your voice, gentle whisper in the noise. Father, tell me everything's all right. In your power, in your presence, break strongholds, King of heaven. When you speak, mountains move. I believe there will be break. alone can take my scars and piece by piece restore my heart. Take what's broken, make it whole again. Whoa, your power and your presence break strongholds, King of heaven. mountains, break the walls apart, open the heavens, almighty God you are, overcomer, defender of my heart. And by your power, the oceans open wide, your fire falls down, heaven and earth collide. King Jesus, forever by my side. Oh, shake the mountains, break the walls apart, open the heavens, almighty God you are, overcomer, defender of my heart. And by your power, the oceans open wide. Your fire falls down, heaven and earth collide. King Jesus, forever by my side. Yeah, your power and your presence break strongholds, King of heaven. The mountains move, I believe there will be breakthrough in your power and your presence. Break strongholds, King of heaven, when you speak. 
and dear God, we just worship you and we, uh, we praise you today. God, we know that you have set us free. It's been so amazing to see uh, the breakthroughs that have happened, uh, not just in my life personally, but uh, in the lives of so many that are a part of this church that are uh, called the crossing their home. God, you are doing uh, some amazing and mighty, mighty work, and we are just so blessed to be able to be a part of it. God, I pray that each and every one of us would truly open up our hearts to you, and we would open up uh, ourselves to you, that we would let you lead us, let you guide us. God, that your love would be the thing that, that, that controls us in every choice that we make and every step that we take, God. Just thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for leading us and for guiding us. And we just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Crossing. I'm Rhonda Christner. Um, I am a child of God, and I had a great life growing up. Um, my mom was the spiritual leader of our home, and she always made sure that we went to church, Sunday school, Awanas. Um, she just wanted to make sure that we knew Jesus Christ as our Savior. My relationship with Christ um, began when I was about eight years old. Um, I asked Jesus into my heart, and I, I believe it was at Vacation Bible School. I knew that Jesus died on the cross to save me from my sin. I feel like I've known Jesus my whole entire life. Um, I don't ever remember a time that I ever gave up hope, but I always knew who Jesus was. As I've gotten older, I realized how much God loves me. Over the past 30 years, um, I've been on a journey of faith. I had some difficult times where um, I fell away from Christ. Just tried to do things my way. Um, my difficult times, I had a rough marriage, um, ended in divorce, financial loss in that, uh, loss of relationships, depression. Um, I was anger. Um, I had bitterness, guilt, and shame, which took me um, in different directions. And all those things that I experienced, um, God showed me truth um, and that his truth had set me free. So I knew he never left me and he was always there. I was trying to figure out mostly what was wrong with me. When I finally realized God's love was enough for me and his amazing grace, he covered everything. My life is being redeemed as I surrender daily to Him. He began a good work in me, and I became a new creation in Christ. He's renewed my spirit within me, and He is changing me from the inside out. He started showing me things that I needed to change. He began refining me and making me whole again. Lately, Jesus has been showing me His love and how to give and to serve others. God has restored my heart, and I have peace. I want to be baptized again to show others that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of my life. Christ has changed my life and is redeeming it for good. There is hope. It's eternity in heaven when we set ourselves apart and give our life to Him. I would like to thank my mom for all her prayers, my husband Bradley for being a man of God and a spiritual leader of our home. My family has been there on my faith journey, and I would also like to thank all the people that God sent into my life who stepped out of their comfort zone to call me out, to show me God's truth and love, and to do God's work. Um, pastors, friends, Bible study leaders, Sunday school teachers, fresh start for your heart. Um, I'm so thankful for all, for all of you. And thank you, Crossing, for your mission. Thank you. Well, good morning, Crossing, and happy Valentine's Day. I know we can't all be here together this morning, but because of technology... We're able to all be together celebrating this wonderful day together. And because of your faithful giving and because you have 
uh, always thought of the crossing as a place where you wanted to finance the kingdom of God. We're able to meet together like this on a Sunday morning on a frigid, frigid day and enjoy the warmth of our own homes and yet still be together. So crossing, we thank you for your faithful giving. Have a great day. Good night. <sighs> Finally. <sighs> hey, hey. How's it going? Uh, I'm pooped. A long day. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, did you happen to bring the dog food? What dog food? Um, I texted you about a couple hours ago and said, hey, on your way back through town, can you please pick up the dog food before you get home? Am I... I've been working all day long. It's like 9 o'clock well, at night. I, I know. I that's why I sent you the message. Food. I sent it to you like a, two hours ago saying, hey, could you please pick it up? I don't know. I get a lot of messages. I don't know. I didn't see it. So, no, I didn't get any dog food. Okay, that's all right. I think we've got a stuff for a couple more days. We can, we can pick some up. Anyway. So, how was your day? Oh, let me tell you. Today, today was the day that I volunteered at the library, and it was story hour. We had three different sections, and it was our Valentine party day. And so, we, that, that translates into glue and glitter and sugar cookies and juice for a whole lot of little kids, which translates into a really big mess and a lot of sugar hide kids. So anyway, we, I mean, which is fine, which is part of what all this is about, and that's good. I'm glad we have that opportunity for them. And then, then after school, I picked the kids up, and we went into town, and because um, I had to get Valentines for their parties. And of course, you know, one wanted this kind, and one wanted that kind, and then they wanted this kind, and then they wanted tattoos for their their valentines, but they wanted pencils, and then they wanted candy, but hey, there was 22 tattoos and only 10 pencils, and so I should get 22 things, and then, and then we finally, finally got all that done, and I got out the store. We picked something up quick to eat for supper, and I got on the road, and that's when I remembered I forgot the dog food, so that's when I sent you the text. <laughs> Did you even hear a word I said? Yeah, you said you went to, like, the library or something. Yeah, I went... Yeah, never mind. Went to the huh? library. You're right. You I, went to I the library? Went to the library. Yeah, that's what I did today. See? I was there with you the whole time. Right. <clears throat> okay. Oh. I'm sorry, hon. I'm just so pooped out. I... Do you guys have supper? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I just said we, I, I picked something up with the kids. On the, thankfully, that is one thing they did agree on. So we were able to get supper and in the car. And here, you, when you work late like this, you usually pick something up. So I didn't think that you, yeah, I, I didn't knew have you were going to be late. Say... Okay. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get you something. But d wait, just a minute. Yeah. Yesterday. You used my car, right? Yeah. Yeah. What did you pick up to eat yesterday? <laughs> I picked up Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Chick-fil-A. What else? Like whoop, whoop, like Chick-fil-A, and then I had Chick-fil-A. No, you had to have had something else other than that. No, just Chick-fil-A. No, no, because today when we got to the store... Yeah. And I had to put my mask on, and I reached down to get it, and it was in a different spot than normal, but I didn't, you know, whatever. I, I put it on, and it smelled so bad. I, it was like, you mean so the, by the time I the got... The mask that was in the car? By the time I got to the uh, store, I had to throw that one away and get the courtesy mask from the thing. Yeah, what? You mean that mask that was the yes. extra mask? Not the, that, like the, I'm going in and, oh shoot, I need a mask and I don't have one, the, like that extra mask that was in there? 
Yeah, That's... it's not an extra mask. It's my mask. What did you do? Because it was disgusting, whatever it was. And there might have been a little bit of a whoopsie on that one. Because uh, cause you know how I get when I'm driving for a long time and then I get tired. Yes. And so I have my sunflower seeds because yes. that's what keeps me awake. And yeah. so I'm, I'm chewing my sunflower seeds. And I know oh, you, you want to keep your car you clean and not put the not. seeds on the ground. And here's this you mask. It's upside. Dude, it's a perfect so seed holder. And so I just, I, 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 I just start putting them in. <coughs> oh, gross. I can't believe... I tell you, that was a little bit of a whoopsie. I can't that. believe you used my... Daddy, you know that's my mask. You know I put it right on the air freshener, so when I put it on, it smells better. Yeah, that... Oh, that was gross. That might have been my bad on that That was one. so disgusting. <laughs> well, see, I didn't have anything else to go with it because I stopped to go to the bathroom, and I know how you like to keep the car clean. I like to keep the car clean. Okay, so just I... stop. Just, just stop. No, stop. No, no, no. Stop. Stop. Just, we got to let this go. Okay? Okay. Okay, thank you for thinking of my car. But that was gross. Thanks for, I, thanks for letting I me go. I will go get you something to eat. So, hon? Yeah, yes? Um, <clears throat> I know it's late, but where are the kids? They're in bed. It's their bedtime. Ooh. So if the kids are in bed, you you wanna? I have a headache. Relationships, they're difficult. They're challenging. There's so much that goes into relationship. And so today, it's Valentine's Day, and uh, hopefully... You are snuggled in and watching today, and uh, I hope that today will be helpful. It is a special Valentine's message, and, uh, and, and all of us face different dynamics that uh, make relationship really, really challenging. And if you're single here this morning, and you're watching, and you're like, oh, shoot, Valentine's message, not really for me, and so this is just going to be, um, you know basically for someone, someone else. There is so much here that you need to hear. If you're single and you, you, you know, you're wanting to have a relationship, maybe you're in a relationship, you want to get married someday, this is, this is a message that you need to grab a hold of and, uh, and really understand it because this will get you down the road so much farther, so much faster than many of the rest of us. I'm telling you, it, it will be worth it for you to listen. And the other thing that I want to say is today isn't really going to be a sermon um, necessarily. It's going to be more like we're at a marriage conference, uh, which some of you are going to go to. So this could be like the precursor to the main event. And uh, this is going to be like a marriage conference message. And, uh, and it's going to be a little bit PG-13-ish in some parts of it. And uh, so kind of want to give you a heads up. There. And so what I would like to do is, if you've, you know, grew up in church, been in church world, um, you, you have heard this taught, and so, you know, probably what I'm going to say is not going to be brand new to you, um, but I think the thing that maybe might be new to you is, if you're anything like me, you hear this stuff taught, and it's like, okay, I, I know what the Scripture is saying, what does that look like on an everyday basis? What does that look like, and, and, and how does it flesh itself out? Could you help me just, because I am a simple guy, I like it put in really simple terms so I can understand, okay, how does this actually work itself out in everyday life? So we're going to look at some scripture, and then we're going to dive into really practical ways that this fleshes itself out in all of our lives. So we're going to jump into Ephesians Ephesians chapter 5, and, uh, and we're going to talk about this, this most powerful principle in all of the planet, mutual submission. Mutual submission is the most powerful relational principle 
available on the planet. When two people decide that they're going to put the other person first, they're going to put their deal first ahead of their own, and saying, hey, you know what, honey? I'm going to put you first. I'm going to put your deal first. I'm going to put your agenda first. I'm going to put your ideas first. I'm going to, I'm going to put you before me. And when two people have a, have a mutual submission competition, it makes for an incredible relationship. And, uh, and, and so that's where Paul starts in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. He says, And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Well, they don't deserve it. Paul says, it doesn't matter if they deserve it. That's why I said, I don't want you to do it if they deserve it. I don't want you to do it, you know, if, if they earn it. I don't want you to do it for that, it, for, for that at all. I want you to do it out of reverence for Christ because Christ puts your deal ahead of his. Christ submitted himself to you. Christ, Christ you know what? You, were, you, were, you didn't deserve it at all. And still Christ came underneath and served you. He puts your deal ahead of his own. And so since he did, and you are following him out of reverence for him and out of reverence for what he did for you while you were still running away from him, calling him names, stiff-arming him, not wanting to have anything to do with him, being disrespectful, unloving, he, he still submitted himself to you. And so Paul just says, hey, I want you to submit to one another. I want to put I want you to put the other person's deal in front of your own, not if they deserve it and not if they earn it, but out of reverence for Christ. Now Paul is going to say, okay, here's the big old heading that I want you to live under, this mutual submission. And now he's going to break it down into specific applications for wives and for husbands. He says in verse 22, the worst verse Ever in Christianity, I suppose, I, I don't know, it is, the, it is the one that has been taken most out of context and, uh, and taken to, you know, beat Christian marriage over the head, I think. But for wives, so the thing that they forget about is Paul just talked about mutual submitting to one another. And so what does that look like? For wives, this means coming under or putting your husband's deal in front of your own. It's just exactly what he just said. For wives, this means submit to your husbands because he deserves it? No, because he, he doesn't deserve it. We already know that. Because he earned it? No, because he didn't earn that either. Well, why? As to the Lord, in the same way that you are submitting, that you're coming underneath, that, you, or that you're saying, Lord Jesus, I'm going to put your agenda ahead of mine. In that same way, Paul says, I want you to put your husband's deal in front of your own. For husbands, okay, here's the application of mutual submission, husbands, for you. This means love. This love is not phileo. It's not brotherly love. It's not eros. It's not erotic love. This is, you know, th this is the agape love. This is no strings attached. No matter what she does, no matter how she acts, no matter if she deserves it or not, I want you to love your wives because she deserved it? No. Because she earned it? No. Well, why? Just as Christ loved the church. Because Jesus loved you. And Jesus loves the church. And he gave you a picture of how he wants you husbands to love your wives. In the same way that Christ loved the church, what did he do for the church? He gave up his life for her. So Paul says, Wives, I want you to put your husband's deal ahead of your own. And then husbands, I want you to agape your wives. I want you to love them with no strings attached. And I want you to give up your life for her. In the same way husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. So what does that look like? I mean, I want you to love your wife this way that you love yourself. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. In other words... There's some benefits to you, husbands, if you would actually love your wife the way Jesus wants you to love your wife. He goes on. No one hates his own body. None of you husbands hate your own body, but feeds it and cares for it. So in other words, 
The same way that you are keeping your body warm right now, in the same way that you are relaxed back on the couch, you're in, the most, you're in your most comfortable place, looking after yourself, making sure that you're fed, making sure that you have hot drinks inside of you, making sure that you are as comfortable as possible, in the same way that you are currently right now loving yourself, you should be looking after your wife in that same way. That's the application. That's what he's saying. So then he kind of wraps it up and says, So again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Love for husbands, respect wives for your husbands. So let's break this down now in very practical terms, okay? Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, it, 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 I'm going to call it the emotional bucket. You, you might say there's a love tank. There might be different terms for it. But for today's application, I'm going to talk about a wife's emotional bucket, and then we're going to be talking about a husband's emotional bucket as well, okay? So I had uh, Cody make this graph for me or this picture for me. So here's the deal. Um, we have an emotional bucket inside of us, and what Paul is, is, is imploring us to do as husbands is to pour in, we are pouring in and trying to fill one of our primary responsibilities to love the way that we love our wives and the things that we do, it is filling her love tank, it is filling her emotional bucket. But the thing that you need to also understand is there is a hole in the bottom of the bucket. And depending on what your wife has gone through or experienced in her life, maybe, you know, a long time ago, maybe as a child, maybe currently, whatever it might be that she is going through, depends on how much of this hole, how big it is, how many there are, and how much is flowing out of the bottom of the bucket. Okay? Now, there's different things that happen, and we're going to go through this, that happen as her emotional you know, bucket gets filled that are, are tremendous things. But our goal, husbands, every single day is to do our best to fill our wife's emotional bucket as full as we can possibly fill it. So let's go through what are some practical emotional bucket fillers, okay? Husbands, what can we be doing to be pouring in to our wives? Emotional bucket fillers. Time spent and you're present. Unlike the skit where I, I was, you know, sitting there looking through and, 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 you know, Jen's talking to me, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there. I'm physically there, but I'm not present. Time spent, but you're present. And it goes along with listening, actively listening. Like I could repeat back to you, not, you know, a little bit, of, but I'm, I'm wanting to understand what you're saying because that communicates to my wife, I care for you. I, 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 I love you. I care what's going on in your life. I care so much. I am willing to have eye contact. I am willing to listen. I might even ask questions. I might even take something that you said that I didn't really understand and repeat it back to you and say, okay, this is what I hear you saying. Is this, is this kind of it? I mean, I care for you. And, and that is emotional bucket fillers, acts of service. You know, I, you know, she's had a long day. And normally, normally maybe she cooks. Normally you don't. And you're like, you know what, honey, I'm, I'm taking you out or I'm, dinner's on me tonight. You just sit back. I'm going to figure. You know, before she ever comes home, I'm just going to have dinner ready for her. You know what? She normally does the dishes. I'm doing the dishes. I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to make sure they're in. Whatever, you know, that you would serve her in a way that in, in your roles that you would maybe not normally do, that you're just like, I'm going to serve. I'm going to clean the house. I'm going to do something that is like, man, so loving. So, and, and here's the thing. With no strings attached. So at the end of the day, she feels loved. That, that her tank is 
being filled, and she and there's trust that's being built. So in other words, you're not doing any of these things with an agenda, with a, I'll do this for you, but I'm expecting something else from you. That does not build trust. That's why this touch probably should be non-sexual. Words of affirmation, what she is asking, what she's asking every single day of her life is, do you find me beautiful? Do you find me lovely? Do you find me beautiful inside? Do you find me beautiful outside? Do you find me lovely? Do you love me? That is what she is asking every single day. And we have an opportunity as husbands to answer that question. Getting away. You know what? I'm going to take it on myself to plan something for us to get away. And I'm going to prioritize you over my work, over everything else of my schedule and everything else that I've got going on. I'm going to take time to plan a getaway just for you and me to get away. Don't leave that just for her to do. You do that. Notes. You're writing notes and leaving it for her so she can read it, she can see it. Text. I'm texting her in the middle of the day. Hey, just thinking about you. Things going on. Take the kids. I mean, when, when, when your kids are young, by the end of the day, you, your wife's exhausted. And I realize, guys, you worked all day long too. But when you come home, I mean, at least... Give her some space. Create some space for her to say, hey, I'll take the kids for, for, for a period of time so you can just have some space for you. And love her that way. Take her for a walk. Make her laugh. I'm telling you, these are things, and, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, okay? So you add to it. And, and here's the thing, guys. You've got to study your wife. And if you don't know what it is that really speaks, because gifts might not be something that really speaks to her, it might be time spent. But you've got to study your wife so that you know what it is that really speaks love to her and then lean into those areas, okay? So what are the emotional bucket, you know, drainers? What are the emotional bucket drainers? Past labels, Okay, so maybe, you, you know, when you were a, a kid, maybe in elementary, maybe in junior high, and high school or whatever, you were labeled as ugly. Someone said that you would never amount to anything or you were ugly or, or, or you, you just, they, there was a label placed on you, ladies, that, you know what, it has been so hard for you. And, that, and, and you know what, you can't accept it even when your husband says it and maybe he says that you're beautiful but you won't believe it. That's a hole in the bottom of the emotional bucket. And it's draining. And no matter how much he's trying to put in there, it's like it just drains right out. And instead of accepting it and saying thank you and believing it and allowing it to build trust, you're just letting it drain right out of the bottom of the bucket. Lies believed about yourself. The stress of life. This is why I don't think it's possible to heal up all of the, the holes in the, in the bottom of the bucket because the stress of life just puts some holes in it. It's going to drain out. And, and guys, you just need to know that, that it's going to drain out. Lack of sleep, this is huge. And this goes along when your kids are really young. Bitterness, unforgiveness, these two are kind of tied together. I have some anger, some things that have really made me angry and I don't I have not learned how to deal with the anger very well and I haven't learned how to do forgiveness and it's turning into bitterness those are holes in the bottom of the bucket and whether your husband had anything to do with any of those things or whether he did that you're not healing those and so it doesn't really even matter what he's putting in there it's just draining right out of the bottom comparison maybe you're Maybe you're in the wrong role. Maybe you're in, in a role in the family that, that is draining to you, that's not natural for you, that, that you don't like, but you're having to fill that role. Abuse. Some of these that you cannot get past on your own, you should seek counsel to help you begin to heal 
those emotional wounds. This is a big one. Abuse, it could be verbal, it could be physical, it could be sexual. Those are really big holes in the bottom of the emotional bucket. So let me uh, give you some emotional bucket notes that, that you just need, need to understand, okay? Wives, your husband cannot fill your emotional bucket completely. He wasn't designed to do that. He can't do that. He cannot fill your emotional bucket completely. You need some friends. You need a life group. You need mama life. That's why we started Mama's Life on Thursdays, so that there was opportunity for moms to come and have community with one another to where, you know what, some other people are actually helping to fill that emotional bucket as well and maybe helping to, to seal up and to heal some of the, the holes in that bottom of the, of the bucket that are just letting everything seep out of the bottom. Your husband can't do it on his own. I've known some ladies who that was an expectation for their husband and they were setting him up for failure. There's no way in the world that he could do it. So, guys, husbands, you need to understand this. The fuller her bucket becomes, the more open she will become sexually. See, this is a big difference between guys and, and girls. I mean, guys, it's just like, what does it take for a guy to be turned on? Nothing. I, I, could, just, I could just decide and for a girl, it's like, what is wrong with you? See, and, and us guys, we think the wives are like, well, what is wrong with you? Can't you just, why can't you just, hey, you know, at the end, in, in our skit, at the end of a long day, we're both exhausted. Like, hey, you want, I mean, she was just like, look, at what? I mean, what in the world? So here's the thing. Guys, it is, the, the, the more you are able to pour in with no strings attached to build trust, the more open she will become, the more emotionally healthy she will become, the more able she will be to, to pour out. See, there, there's a level of the bucket that has to get to before she's even able to pour anything out. And so you've got to understand as a husband that your job is to pour in, pour in, pour in, pour in, and hopefully pour in to the point where she is able to pour out. So, lastly, if you don't do the hard work of healing wounds, they will be there in the next relationship. Some of you gals, you're thinking, you know what, if I just got a different husband, if I just got a different boyfriend, if I just got a different, if I just got a different one, if I just, you know what, if I go to a different city, if I go to a different town, if I go to a different job, if I go to, you know, a different guy, that guy, that guy, you know what, he's going he's gonna to be so much better. I mean, I must have married the wrong person. You need to understand that if you don't do the hard work of healing those wounds, that, those holes in the bottom of the, of, of the bucket, you're just going to take that, that bucket that has a bunch of holes in it and you're going to carry it into the next relationship. And here's the thing, so, much, so many times, we are carrying so much baggage when we carry it into a relationship and all of a sudden we bump into one another relationships, you know what, make it come out of us and, 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 and we talked about this in previous, in previous sermons and, and you're like, why did that come out of us? Well, you made it come out of me. No, it came out of you because that's what's in you. That's what's in you. Taking the time to heal those, those wounds is so so important. Husbands, this is, this is so important for you to understand. The bucket empties sometime in the night, every night. I don't understand why this happens. I don't understand how this happens, but I'm just telling you, after 28 years of marriage, I have discovered that somewhere in the middle of the night, the bucket empties. And you start every single day at zero. Now, you might have 
you know what? You so poured in. You had, you had an awesome day. You, you so poured in on Monday and on Tuesday. I mean, you did acts of service and all this stuff, and it was great. And then, and then Wednesday, you're just kind of like, hey, you wanna? And she looks at you like, well, what have you done today? And you're like, well, well, what about like the last two days? I've been, I've just been pouring in, and you just need to know it reset. I don't know if it automatically resets at midnight. I don't know how it works. All I'm just telling you that it empties every single night, and every day you're starting at zero, and your job is to pour in to your wife, just as out of reverence for, in the same way that Jesus served and poured into you. All right? So, and one last thing on, 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 the, on the women's side, don't forget about temperaments. Don't forget about temperaments. It's so important to understand. You know what? And I don't have a whole lot of time to go into the temperaments so I would just encourage you, if you have not done this, couples, you have got to do this, okay? You've got to go check out. There's six videos to watch on YouTube called I Said This, You Heard That. You have got, you owe it to yourself to understand those different temperaments and how they affect your marriage. In, in learning how to love and respect one another really well, you've got to understand the, how, how your spouse is hardwired, Okay? So, go check that out. All right, husbands, you might not think that you have an emotional bucket, and wives, you might not think your husband has an emotional bucket, but he does, and it's just as large as yours. It might be even larger, but we guys, we're really good at masking it. We're really good at making it look like we don't have one, but I'm telling you, it is just as big as yours. It might even be bigger than Yours. And in the same way that the husbands are supposed to be pouring into the wives, you wives have the opportunity and the responsibility to pour into your husband. And in the same way that there's holes in the bottom of the bucket for the wives, there is holes in the bottom of the bucket for the husbands as well. And this level has got to get to a certain point before your husband is emotionally healthy enough to be able to pour into you. And so it's this, it's this exchange of pouring in, this mutual submission of pouring into one another and pouring in to one another and filling one another up and filling one another up. It is a beautiful picture when it is done God's way. So what are some emotional bucket fillers? It's, it's almost the same exact list as the women, it just kind of fleshes itself out a little bit differently. You see, when I came in in the skit and I sat down, I had a long day, and one of the first things out of, out of Jen in our skit was, did you get the dog food? It wasn't, hey, how was your day? Man, it sounds like you had a really long day. It was, it was a task over a person. It was, did you get the dog food? See, that's disrespect, that's what disrespect looks like. It's like, okay, you, you're just worried about the dog food, but you don't care about me. And, and, and we don't intentionally speak that way, but that's what happens when, you know, things are short and, and, and we don't end up filling each other's buckets. So, wives, your job is to study your husbands. You know what? Some of them might be time spent. Some of them's like, you know, not a lot of time. Some of them are big gift people. Some of them aren't big gift people. Words of affirmation, the primary thing that your husband is asking you every single day and you have an opportunity to answer for him is do I have what it takes? Do I have what it takes? See, when I was a, a little boy, we had this porch, this concrete porch, and I had a, a little football and I would spin the football until it would finally go up on its, on its, uh, on its nose and, and, and twirl around. And then we had this, this uh, power line that went across on the other side of the yard. And I would step back and I'd kick it. And it would go up and over the, 
I, I, I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced until I, I was consistently kicking it over the wire, kicking it over the wire, and then I'd run in and I'd get mom. And I'd take mom out to, to, to show her, I have what it takes. I have what it takes. I didn't even have any idea that's what I was asking, but now looking back at it, it's like, yep, that's what those little boys are asking. They're coming out and they're coming in to get bombed. And you know what? When I was under pressure, lots of times, I couldn't kick it over the wire and just, oh. But my mom would be like, because her sewing room was right there, and so she was like, I was actually watching you the entire time out the window. I know you can kick it over the wire. You have what it takes this is so important to understand for if you have little boys that you're raising, they're asking you, Mom, do I have what it takes? And you have an opportunity to answer that for them. And wives, it's the same way with your husbands. It never, they never stop asking the question. For some, it's touch. For others, it may not be. Getting away. Are you, have you ever planned a getaway for you and your husband? Or is it just, The husband's deal. And you're expecting him to do it? Notes? Are you leaving notes for him? Maybe it's acts of service. Maybe it's creating space for him, giving him some space, giving him some time in his man cave or whatever it might be. Taking an interest. Do you go out in the tractor with him? Do you do you take an interest in their interest in guys for the wives or it might be time for you guys to put your big boy pants on and watch a Hallmark movie? You're not going to die. You're not going to die. But you wives, in the same way, it might be time for you to put your big girl pants on and watch a game or watch something that he's interested in. Take an interest in the things that he is interested in. Listen. Make him laugh. All of those things. Okay. So, now it's going to get a little bit PG-13-ish, okay? Here we go. There is a primary way, wives, that you can fill your husband's emotional bucket. A primary way you fill your husband's emotional bucket is through sexual pursuit. And this is why. It communicates to him with a megaphone that I approve of you, I'm happy with you, I desire you, I choose you. Those are all dumping into the bucket. Those are huge deposits into the bucket. Now listen, it's not the sex. It's not it. It's not it. It it, it is your pursuit in the middle of the activity. It is your pursuit. It It is the way that you are conducting yourself in the middle of it that is communicating something to him of, I don't really want to be here, but I'm just here because... You wanted me to be here, and so just let me know when you're done. Or, I want to be here, and I'm participating, and I'm involved, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm, I, I, I'm letting myself go in the middle of this. That is communicating in a huge way the same thing. It is, this is equivalent, wives, to what the husband should be doing in pouring love into your emotional bucket. All of those deposits, all of those deposits in the same way, wives, that is a deposit into his emotional bucket. This is why, this is why so many guys have a porn addiction problem. Because in porn, the woman looks like she is giving herself away to the guy. She wants to be there She is actively involved, and it's not the sex, although that's, you know, exciting. It's it's what she's doing. She looks like she's approving of that person. She's looking like she's happy. She's looking like she desires him. She's looking like she's choosing him. That's that's the, the catch, and that's why it becomes so addictive. And so, guys, you need to understand, you know what, When it comes to porn, that woman could care less about you. All she she wants is your money. She could care less about you. But wives, you need to understand 
why it is such a draw and why it is so addictive for a guy. This is so, so important. All right. <clears throat> Emotional bucket notes. Husbands, you must understand that uninhibited sexual pursuit by your wife is an emotional drain for her. It is an emotional drain. She, she just poured herself out into you. And guess what? Your emotional bucket is full. And so tomorrow you're kind of like, honey, why don't we do this every day? Because this is just awesome. Wasn't that awesome? And, and she's over there. It's like, I'm exhausted. You know, I, like what? And, and, and the guys can't understand why the wives wouldn't want to do that every day because that is a bucket filler for them. And then the, the wives are like, what is wrong with you? Why, why do you want that every single day? There's must, there's, there must be something wrong with you. You should go to therapy or something. I mean, so you just need to understand, guys, that that is a gift from your wife to you. And so it, it, is, a, it, it is in some ways a bucket drainer for her, okay? So you need to come right back around and just start filling her bucket, filling her bucket, no strings attached, no strings attached, all right? Ladies, wives, I'm just telling you, this is so huge and it's so powerful. Be his biggest fan, not his biggest critic. Be his biggest fan, not his biggest critic. Let someone else be his critic. You be his fan. If, 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 his, if he's right here and you want him to be right here, you will never criticize him to here, ever. You'll never get him there. It's just so strange, but if you will be his biggest fan, I'm just telling you what, if you start pouring into him, pouring into him, pouring into him, he will be so motivated that he will make progress to where you want him to be. But if you criticize him and you think you can criticize him to over here, you'll never get him there. And, 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 by, and, and you know what? You'll end up with a trustless marriage that is not experiencing intimacy on any level whatsoever. Be his biggest fan, not his biggest critic. Okay. So, <clears throat> it's Valentine's Day, and you guys are like, well, I don't have like a whole bunch of time to, to, to pour in, and, and how, how am I supposed to be intentional? You're not. You're not. It, it, it's not going to, it's just not going to happen, right? You don't have enough time. So, here's what I would love for you to do today on Valentine's Day. I want you to give. And I want you to give the gift of believing the best today. Would you give to one another something that maybe they don't even deserve, that you would give them the gift of believing the best instead of assuming the worst? Believe the best about them. Believe the best in them rather than assuming the worst. That you would build trust instead of breaking it down. Would you give them the gift of trust today? Would you give them the gift of intimacy today. And, and I'm not just talking physical, I'm talking emotional intimacy. Guys, give your gift, the, give your wife the gift of, of, of emotional intimacy that you would just, you would pour into her, you would cuddle her, you, you would make the day about her. Give the gift of intimacy. Give the gift of love and respect today. And then tomorrow, I want you to get after it in filling one another's buckets and understand how this idea of mutual submission works and how this, this, you know, the, this primary way wives of you pursuing sexually your husbands, I think that's why Paul you know, talked about in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 5, he's just saying, hey, hey, you gotta under, don't, don't be taking a whole bunch of time off unless you both have agreed about it. It's like, I'm just telling you, it is a huge, huge deal. And I think that's why he talked about that in 1 
Corinthians, but give one another today this gift, and then tomorrow, come on. Come on. If you will begin to do that, I'm just telling you what, you will have an amazing, amazing marriage. And here's the thing. You will make Valentine's Day not just one day out of the year. You will begin to make it every day. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I pray for the crossing. I pray for the couples who are watching this right now. I pray for the single people who are watching this as well, and I pray that they would be taking notes so they would understand how relationship is, is made to work and, Jesus, how you've made it to work so that they could apply it early if you would bless them with a romantic relationship. And, God, for the, the marriages that are represented, that are watching, I, I just, some of them are stuck, God. Some of them, there's just, there's just a thread of trust, and maybe there's not even any trust. And, and, and they look at this, and they're like, you know, I, I, I just I can't believe the best. I just, I, it's just, it's just, I'm assuming the worst. I don't even know how to get there. And God, I just pray that you would give them the courage. Would you give them your spirit and allow them, give them the power and the courage to just take one step and build Build one brick at a time, one brick at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time, and I pray that you would build back into their relationship trust and intimacy and believing the best in grace. And God, I pray that today would might be the start of that. And God, I pray that for those who are doing well, that we wouldn't fall asleep at the wheel but God, you would help us as well to continue on to get better and better and better. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining in with us this morning, and uh, I hope to see you. We will be back in the Life Center next week at 9.30 and 11, and we will be kicking off a brand new series called Christian, and what in the world does that mean? That's what we're going to talk about. Have a great day. See you next week. Um, this is the story of our life, isn't it? This is the story of, of our the life. the last 28 years. Yeah, it is. Um, I think maybe some people are probably wondering, how real was that first opening skit? <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, over the years, we have learned a little more respect, and we've learned a little more love, and uh, we typically don't talk that sharp to one another. Um, anymore, but there was a time when we certainly did. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you have any confessions, though? <laughs> any confessions um, <clears throat> of uh, talking sharp? No. <laughs> I mean, how much of that skit was actually real? Oh, like, yeah. Like, uh... Well, the ending, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> what I'm getting at is that mask incident really did happen. Oh, yeah. That... And it was disgusting. Yeah, that was a, real, that was a little bit of a whoopsie. <laughs> That really did happen, and I don't know why I didn't throw the mask away, why I just dumped the, that was kind of a man 
man mistake right there. Yeah. yeah. You know, as you were talking about these emotional buckets, I, I think sometimes we get to, into the point where um, we think that filling our bucket is our job. So I take control of my bucket. So I'm in charge of it, and I'm going to start pouring in and doing things for me. And I sort of neglect. And, you know, it's not just that you have a bucket, but my children do too. Um, everybody around me does. And really, honestly, if we were to, you know, it, it's, it's hard for one person to do it. But if we were to empty out and let everybody else, I mean, if you think about everybody else pouring in, that's a whole lot more return than just one. Yeah, right? and I, well, I was sitting here thinking about that too of, you know, my, my job is to fill yours. Not to, to instruct you and to um, help you fill mine. That's not my job. And, and so many times, that's been a lot of conflict between us is, you know, I, I'm, I, I, they obviously, she obviously doesn't know, and, you know, I obviously don't know, and so I'm, I'm the one who needs to tell them, hey, you need to be doing this and 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 this. And, and all of a sudden, our, we are very selfishly um, focused on our own bucket rather than coming through, and that's like forcing it through the front door, and you never, it's just not Jesus' way to force it through the front door. He always comes through the back door and says, hey, the best way for you to have, you know, what you really, really want is this deep, close intimacy in a, in a relationship is um, to focus on the other person's bucket and just start filling it up, start filling it up. So, yeah. And allowing others as well, and I, that's a big deal, I, I, I think. And I've seen that with gals so much where they spend 100% of their time with their husbands thinking the husband's supposed to fill their bucket and they got to have some other uh, lady-friend um, relationships for that. Yeah. Um, being uh, your husband, being your wife's biggest fan, yeah. not his biggest critic, That um, that sometimes is... A challenge because I think sometimes wives feel like, well, I'm the one that should tell him, you know, it's it's my job to let him know where he's falling short, so that when he's around others, he looks okay. So it's it's my job to say, no, you need to do this, this, and this, and that doesn't always go as well. No, to you know, and I think if you were to be his biggest fan, if and and praise him, especially in front of others, you might be more receptive for a little bit of correction in private. Yes. It's, the, it's the same, you know, publicly praising earns some private criticism. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so it, way more easily, you know, open to, to listening to some of those things. But that, that's one that uh, has to be learned and intentionally applied, and it's not easy. Um, so... But that's a big deal. It really is. Um, any last final Valentine plug here? You know, I just, some of you are stuck. You're stuck. You, you, you listen to this and you're like, well, that sounds great, Eric. But, you know, it's just, there, it, it, there's, no, there's very little trust. Um, and so I just don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. I don't see us making progress. I don't think he's ever going to change. I don't think she's ever going to change. So I just want to let you know, we've been stuck many times, okay? And there's been times when we've had to build trust back a brick at a time. And, and some of the past ways that we did things because we didn't even really know any better and we're just flying by the seat of our pants and kind of just going with what's natural, we hurt one another deeply, deeply hurt one another. And so building back out of that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of intentionality. And, uh, and so it can come back. And, uh, and so I just uh, want to encourage you today that uh, it may not be back today, but build, put a brick in, in today. Take a right step today.
All right. Thank you. Um, you know, as Eric was talking, I keep one one um, passage of scripture or whatever that has always I've kind of always gone to when Eric and I are struggling or or going through something is um, within in Joel, the book of Joel. Yeah, where's that? Yeah, it's a tiny little prophet at near the end of the Old Testament. But he talks about um, God restoring the land with where the locusts have eaten. You know, you'll be you will restore what the locusts have eaten. And um, sometimes that's what it feels like in the relationship that the locusts have had a heyday and there's just nothing left but a wasteland. But God um, will restore all of that. Um, Eric mentioned the temperaments. I said this, you heard that. That's a wonderful resource and it has helped us to be able to go, uh -huh, that's your red, that's my green, that's your yellow, that's my blue, whichever it is, and we can understand each other. Another one that you and I have found to be helpful was um, Love and Respect by Emerson Egrich. Um, that's where we can sort of see he's looking at life through blue glasses and I've got pink glasses on and it's it's okay. <laughs> They're different, but that's okay. And um, that's been helpful for us to go through all of that. Um, crossing, I want to just thank you. Um, enjoy your Valentine's Day. I think today there's no football, so that means it's a day for Hallmark. So uh, go ahead, snuggle up with your Valentine, get a nice blanket, get some popcorn, maybe put some dots or M&Ms in there, whatever it is that you guys prefer. Uh, click on hot the chocolate and coffee. some hot chocolate and click on that Hallmark channel and enjoy your Valentine's Day. We'll see you back next week.